Hello and welcome to, or welcome back to, the channel. Guys, today I'm going to be hopefully breaking down the Axis faction in Enlisted, giving you all an overview of the best weapons and vehicles, and where you should be spending your hard-earned silver in each tier for the Axis. This is the second of my faction guides, so make sure to check out the Allies faction guide that's already up, and subscribe to the channel to see when the Soviet, Japanese, and any other faction guides for the future will release. But enough of all of that guys, let's jump into the video. Our first priority, as with any faction in Enlisted, is going to be unlocking some form of anti-tank for all of our soldiers. For the Axis, this is going to be the PZB-38. Now this anti-tank rifle is, well, lackluster to say the least, but it's better than nothing, and we're not going to be getting a substantial upgrade until Tier 2. Whenever you're using this, try to knock the tracks off enemy tanks and then finish them off with an explosive pack or a TNT charge. You're not going to be able to destroy very many tanks simply by shooting them in the side or ammo racking them with the PZB. It just simply doesn't have enough penetrative power. Once you unlock the anti-tank squad, make sure you also slot them into your lineup so you can level them up and max out your anti-tank soldiers for your other squads. Now that we've got some anti-tank, we're going to be pushing next for the Carcano M41. Now the rifle itself is fine, but we've got the car 98 and we can just simply keep using that. What we really want here is the engineer squad. Engineers, if you don't know, are the most important class in all of Enlisted. They're going to give us tons of utility on the battlefield, being able to build anti-tank guns, anti-air guns, fortifications, rally points, so on and so forth. Again guys, make sure that you equip the engineer squad to be able to level it up to max and bring engineers to your other squads fully maxed out with perks. Lastly for our infantry equipment, we're going to be looking to pick up the MP340. This is a solid upgrade from the MP28 giving us better handling and a bigger magazine while also being able to be very cheap and not break the bank. I recommend sticking with the MP34 for quite some time, at least until late tier 2. It's overall just a solid weapon, and it's very cheap to upgrade as well. For rifles, Germany is certainly not lacking. The starting rifle, the Gewehr 33-40, is a fine rifle that is more than capable of servicing you until you inevitably unlock some semi-autos later on. However, if you're looking for an upgrade and you want some better rifles, there's a couple different options available. Of course, the legendary Car 98 k is an excellent rifle that would be a great pickup for anyone who's looking to play at some, you know, more medium, longer ranges. The VZ-24 is also a solid option. It has incredibly high hit power, making it able to one-shot just about anyone on the battlefield without downing them. Bottom line here, guys, just choose whichever rifle you personally enjoy the most. Try out the different ones, find the ones that you feel like have a good a uh, sight and ergonomics for you. There's really not a wrong answer. Now, for the last little bit, snipers. There's two main options. If you want to play a more traditional sniper at longer ranges, the Car 98 is great. It'll definitely do that and it'll serve your needs in that way. However, that typically isn't very rewarded in Enlisted. Enlisted's a more fast-paced game where you want to be more aggressively pushing objectives and enemies. For that, the Carcano Mod 38 is absolutely incredible. It is, it shoots faster than the Car 98, it hits harder, and it has a better scope on it for shorter ranges or more medium range engagements that, again, is more suited to enlisted. So if you're looking to play Sniper, guys, I really recommend trying out the Mod 38 over the Car 98 and just seeing how it feels. I promise you guys, you'll probably find it more effective and more fun. Moving on to early vehicles, Germany doesn't have a ton. Their dominance in vehicles comes a little bit later. But the Panzer 3J is still a solid unlock early on for the Axis. It has overall solid statistics between its armor, gun, and mobility. However, guys, it's going to still struggle against enemies that you're up-tiered into, like the T-34. Now, for planes, however... The IAR-81C is arguably the best plane at this BR in the entire game. I'm serious, guys. This thing being BR-1 is just completely nonsense. And I honestly expect it to get moved in the future. It comes with two 20mm cannons, a pair of 50kg bombs, and a 250kg bomb. Putting it basically on the same payload of damage that a Stuka has. 
while still maintaining a significantly better flight uh, model. Not only that, guys, but the IAR also comes with both combat flaps and dive brakes, making it an excellent dive bomber and is still able to outmaneuver basically any other plane in the game with this BR. I'm serious. This thing is absolutely nuts. I've accidentally brought it into high tier BR5 games before and done just fine. All right. If you have any interest in flying, guys, then this plane is really all you're going to need for a very long time. So that's all for tier one. The axes have the most unlocks of any faction, guys, so buckle up. Let's get into tier two. Overall, Axis have a decent tier 2, though most weapons or vehicles that they have are really just okay, rather than, you know, excellent. Our absolute number one priority going into tier 2, however, is going to be working on our anti-tank problem. The Stern Pistol is one of the anti-tank weapons of all time, but, I mean, is an upgrade over your poor PZB you've been using, which I'm sure at this point you're probably pretty frustrated with. However, guys, it's really just the price and the fact that the GRB is so close and so much better, it makes it hard for me to recommend picking any of these Sturm Pistols up in any serious amount. Instead, guys, just push a little bit longer for the GRB 39. This is going to be your go-to anti-tank weapon anytime you guys are playing BR2, and is going to give you the ability to take on just about any enemy vehicle in the game at this battle rating. Make sure to outfit all of your anti-tank soldiers and all of your squads with this weapon. As for mainline rifles, the Manlisher rifle is a good pickup for anyone who expects to stay in BR2 for quite some time, and it's my personal go-to rifle for lower BR games. But again, just like before guys, it's by no means necessary, and the Axis rifles are all solid across the board. Two semi-auto rifles also become available at this uh, tier, the VG-15 and the Armaguera Mod 39. Now the VG-15 is actually a battle rating 3 weapon, despite the fact that it's in tier 2, meaning that by equipping this you'll be massively up tiering yourself and you're probably not ready for this, so I highly recommend you guys stay away from this weapon for now. The Armaguera on the other hand is an option for battle rating 2, but unfortunately has pretty low hit power and a magazine size of just 6. Meaning that you're going to find yourself spending often several bullets of your 6 round magazine to kill just a single dude. Personally guys, I recommend just stick with bolt action rifles. The German bolt action rifles are all fantastic. We've also gained access to machine guns. Now the Axis machine guns at this battle rating and this tier are actually quite solid compared to their counterparts for the Ax or for the Allies, excuse me, and the Soviets. So it's definitely a good idea to begin working up this line so you'll be able to pick up weapons later on like the MG42 down the tech tree. Again, make sure to slot these into your lineup to start leveling them up. Whether you choose to use the Breda Mod 30 or the MG13 is completely up to you. They're both fine weapons to be using. And finally, guys, the FNAB is a good option for your assaulters and medics. A big 40-round magazine means it can easily clear a room out, though its low rate of fire means that you'll often find yourself with low DPS and losing gunfights to guns like the PPS-43. Buckle up for that, because that's going to be a recurring thing for assaulter weapons for the Axis. However, guys, if you're happy with the MP34 and you're doing well with it, then just stick with that. Otherwise, the FNAB is a decent weapon and a decent upgrade over the MP34. For vehicles in Tier 2, we've got it pretty easy. The SD KFZ 234-2, or the Puma, is an absolutely incredible vehicle at the start of Tier 2 and is one of the best vehicles in all of Battle Rating 2. Arguably one of the best vehicles in the game. An absolutely great cannon and insane mobility make this thing not only a powerful vehicle, but also just one of the most fun vehicles in the entire game to play. Make sure to always be on the move when you're using this thing. Constantly try to get on the edges, scoot and shoot, right? You always want to be able to flank enemies, shoot them in the side, and then disappear as the enemy marks you, uh, and you can avoid any anti-tank coming your way. You won't really need to unlock any other tanks for quite some time, guys, and the BR-2 tanks for the Axis are really just not as good as this. A special note for the Panzer IV-E, which is fantastic at anti-infantry support, but guys, just stick with the Puma. It's really just that good. Uh, make sure, Just feel free to unlock the Puma and then focus on infantry equipment. Planes are 
basically the same guys with the majority of the planes in battle rating 2 and tier 2 just simply not worth the silver cost and investment for them right now the iar is better overall than just about any of these planes so again i recommend just focusing your silver on infantry upgrades you can always come back and unlock these later on and one last thing for tier 2 guys be sure to pick up the apc squad located in the heavy weapons tree it's essentially a mobile rally point that's going to give you a little trickle of XP anytime someone spawns on it. And it's a great tool for just gaining some extra XP and helping your team as well as yourself out in game. Yeesh, so much stuff, but on to tier 3 we go. We've got a lot of options here on where to begin. The Panzerfaust is an obvious choice, since any tanks that you guys run into will cease to be a problem once you've grabbed enough Panzerfausts, so that's always a good choice to start moving towards at the beginning of this tier. The Gewehr 41 is also our first semi-automatic rifle that is some sort of upgrade over our bolt actions, though its long reload time is definitely going to annoy the hell out of you guys, I'm sure. For Assaulter weapons, the Beretta M1 is basically just a better MP40, Although keep in mind that the MP40 is technically a BR2 weapon despite the fact it's in tier 3. Making it great for if you want to stay in the lower battle ratings uh, and farm XP before you start going up into battle ratings 4 and 5. We also get the MG34 which is a huge upgrade from our previous MGs. And one that absolutely outclasses anything else that the Soviets or allies will have access to at the same BR. MG squads outfitted with MG34s will be a staple for all of your BR3 lineups. And back to vehicles for tier 3. The big tank unlock here guys is the Panzer IV F2. It being the first long barreled 75 makes this tank suddenly able to go toe to toe with nearly anything short of a jumbo or a Pershing. Though fights against later Soviet tanks like the T3485 or the IS-2 are still far from fair fights. Still, it's something to begin working towards. For planes, the BF-110 line ends with the BF-110G2, arguably the best close air support plane the Axis have access to. It's a long grind to get it though, since it's buried behind two other BF-110s, but if you're looking for some cast gameplay as the Axis, then this is about as good as it gets. Mostly guys, we're going to be ignoring the plane line going forward in favor of the tank line. Tier 3 was pretty short, and now we're on to high tier Axis gameplay, where they really start picking up some steam. First off guys, we've got some seriously iconic weapons here, and they do not disappoint us. The G43 is a welcome upgrade from the 41, now with a magazine reload rather than stripper clips, making the reload speed much faster and the weapon much better overall. The MG42 is also unlocked here at the start of tier 4. If I'm being honest, the MG42 isn't actually that amazing, and is honestly outclassed by the MG34 in a lot of different ways. But also, it's an MG42. So, big win there. Assaulter weapons are pretty boring at this tier though. Nothing really pops out. Most of these guns are really just expensive, slightly better versions of the MP40. Save your silver, and if you've got some spares, maybe pick up a couple of these if you really like them. But overall, you'll need to unlock them so you can inevitably get the STG44 variants later on in tier 5. But they're not really worth the silver. I recommend saving it for other things. Our heavy weapons tree gives us the Ofenor and the Panzerfaust 100. If you want to unlock these, you can, and both of these are similarly powerful uh, to each other. And while they are technically upgrades over the Panzerfaust 60, it's not really so much so of an upgrade that it's a big deal. The Panzerfaust 60 is more than serviceable most of the time. The Ofenroar is especially easy to use compared to the Fausts, so if you struggle with the kind of arc from the Panzerfaust, then this is a nice plus. If you've got some spare silver and you want to unlock these because you don't have anything else, maybe grab them but otherwise just skip them it's not a big deal and now we get into the late war axis tanks that i know you've been drooling over since tier one these first couple panzer fours are really just roadblocks they're fine but they're not what you're looking for i know you guys are looking at those sweet sweet panthers the first P uh, panther that you unlock the panther a is a major advantage over just about any tank out there 
Very few tanks from the Allies or the Soviets are capable of penetrating the front pla plate excuse me, of the Panther, meaning that they'll always have to target your turret, which is a much harder shot, especially in Enlisted. On the flip side, you'll have no issues at all penetrating just about anything, anywhere you want to. And guys, the tanks only get better from here. Like I mentioned before, for planes, we'll mostly be ignoring them. The Ju-188 is the other top tier close air support plane alongside the Bf-110, but you still won't be able to match the power of the allied vehicles like the P-47. The Axis dominate through their tanks and through their infantry weapons like the STG and the FG-42, not through their planes. I honestly recommend skipping out on the rest of this line and not wasting the time, guys. And finally, we get to the cream of the crop. Tier 5 Axis. We've got a lot of huge upgrades, so I hope you've been saving up some silver, guys. The first is the FG-42 and the FG-42-2. Both of these are select fire powerful weapons that will be huge upgrades over your standard semi-auto rifles like the G41 or G43. The FG42-2, especially when combined with vertical recoil reduction perk, is an absolute laser beam. There's also some STG snipers and FG42 sniper variants here if you want to pick them up, though personally guys, I'd skip out on them. What we really want is those sweet assaulter STGs. Each of these STG-44 variants gets better as you unlock them, with the STG-44 being the best of the bunch. However, the MKB-42 is a just tremendous upgrade from whatever SMG you were using before, like the MP-40, that it's probably worth outfitting at least one of your squads with them. These oftentimes feel like just straight up cheating, especially against the allies who just don't have a weapon to match the STG. The only real challenge you'll get against them is experienced Soviet players using the Fedorov, or AS-44. Your end game should honestly be lots of STG Assaulter squads combined with FG-42 Engineer squads. Also of note is the MG-15, which is fairly lackluster. I mean, it's a fine gun, don't get me wrong. It fires fast, hits hard, but... Honestly, I'm not sure why you'd bother running any MG squads at this point when the STG exists. If you are going to run a machine gun squad, I personally would just use an MG42 just for the fun of it. Now for vehicles, we're hitting serious stride. Panzers, Tigers, and Panthers, oh my. The Agd Panzer line is fine, but again, it's a speed bump. Who cares about it with that beautiful Tiger sitting just right there over the hill? The Tiger, while slightly more vulnerable than the Panther, has the giant 88mm cannon that will be able to toast anything it looks at except for specifically the Jumbo Sherman, which can't really hurt you in return anyway. The Tiger H1 is also folded behind the E, and while it is worse than the, the Tiger E, uh, it's also a BR-4 vehicle as opposed to BR-5. Now as of the recording of this video, that doesn't actually matter but it could in the future, so keep an eye out, guys. The biggest downside of the Tiger is the fact that the Tiger II is just around the corner. The Tiger II-P has a long version of the 88mm with even more penetration and even more armor. It does have a pretty serious weak point in the turret, meaning smart enemy players will be able to take you on and kill you, but the Tiger II-H fixes this flaw meaning nothing in the game, except specifically the IS-2 and the Pershing, are able to actually penetrate your frontal armor, making you nigh invincible. Well, I mean invincible at least until a 500 pound bomb or a barrage of HVARs are dropped onto your head, but not a lot you can do about that unless you go through the plane line, which, as I've said several times here guys, high tier axis is just simply not about the planes. It's about the tanks and the infantry weapons. But if you have grinded through this tree and you're looking for something, the FW-190A8 is a notably good plane that I myself use. It has a pair of rockets and some good cannons that do good damage. But honestly guys, again, I'd recommend saving planes as uh, for last. Whew, that is it guys. There's a lot in the Axis tree and of course I couldn't touch on everything. But I did hit the basics and the big stuff for each tier. Keep in mind, guys, that this is just a very broad overview, like I mentioned, and whatever you find the most fun is what you should use. Don't let my opinions sway you in that regard. I'm just trying to give a good overview of what typically is considered to be powerful and 
steer you away from options that might be less powerful that you might end up wasting some silver on. But without anything else, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already and this guide helped you out, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out personally so much more than you guys know. And once again, I appreciate you guys being here, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy.